welcome uh, to my Cons of Tarkir limited set review. Uh, today I'm looking at all the cards uh, and cons as if I, as if they have never existed before. I personally have never played with them, so I there's going to be stuff that I like don't know that like there's like secret tech that I that's not that's not what I'm here to do. I don't know that stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I can like evaluate the cards, you know, as if the set were coming out today um, in preparation for its release on Arena. Um, because I, you know, A, I want to see if, like, my card evaluation skills matter, like, they're good, and I can actually, like, read stuff. Um, and B, um, it's just, it's good, it's good preparation, right? It's good prep to just look at the cards, see what they do, you know, new set coming out, a new set. It's not new, it's old, but it's new to me and new to a lot of people, and, you know, not, you know, Limited isn't played the same way it was, you know, in 2014 when cons came out, so there's going to be some different things. Things are going to be different than they were, right? The stuff that was good back then is probably still going to be good. A lot of it's probably still going to be good, but I think there are going to be noticeable changes. Um, when Shadows Remastered came out, people told everybody that Travel Preparations was the best card ever, and then it was kind of bad. Like, secretly, it was, like, a little bit bad. There are people that will... They're, like, nobody, like, knows that it was kind of a little bit bad. Um, but it, it, it was... It didn't perform as well as I think people expected, and I think there's going to be stuff like that where... You know, and also there was, like, a Traverse the Ulvenwald, I think, was the other one. The green enchantment. That everybody thought was like the best thing ever, and ended up just kind of not being that great, right? It didn't. It didn't hold up to the to the the rigor of Modern Limited. Now, some of that was that you know the format was altered, right? SIR was not the same as it was, a, it was an amalgamation of multiple sets. This is just we're bringing the set back, right? All the cards are coming back. So um, yeah, I mean, let's let's get into it. I this is my these are my card tiers. Ah ah, to hide. Um, these are my card tiers, tier 1, good stuff, tier 5, bad stuff. Feel free to read what the tiers mean. Um, they're not especially complex. Um, but uh, we're going to start grading the cards, and we're going to start with Abomination of Gudal, Gudul, which is uh, 3 Sultai mana, 3 and 3 Sultai mana for a 3-4 flyer. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard a card, and it has more for, for 2 in the Sultai colors. Um, yeah, this card seems totally fine to me. Um, it's essentially, like, a, a six mana, three, four flyer is, is pretty bad. Now it has a looting. Like, looting is good, right? Like, looting is a thing you want, especially on, like, your six... Now, you kind of want it on, like, your four mana play. Is like, ide like, the ideal looting time, because you can attack with your four drop on turn five, and then you kind of don't really want lands anymore at that point once you've hit your fifth land. So, like, you know whether or not you want more lands. Um, in this set, you may want more lands. There's expensive spells. But, uh... Yeah, this guy seems fine. Like, it seems totally okay. Um, I have heard rumblings that Saltai is, like, completely unplayable, so this card may, you know, not actually be good because of the colors it's in, potentially. Again, that's, like, just sort of a, something I heard. Could be totally wrong. Could not be Could not be right. Could not be backed up by uh, reality. But uh, the card itself seems fine. Um, and uh, I put it in Tier 3 as a result of that. Abzan Ascendancy. White... That's one of the each of the Abzan colors, white, black, green. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So, I am a known hater of cards that say when when X enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. I generally think those cards are very bad. However, because because they need you to have they basically like. They force you to play a certain way in the early game um, to have them be good. So you kind of have to have them in your opener to know that you have to play that. Like, you don't want to trade off, right? You want to have your stuff sit around and be, you know, bigger. This format is just sort of naturally conducive to that. Again, there's a lot of creatures with high toughness, low power. There's going to be less trading. Um, you know, you're always going to have the ability to play something on turn three. That's... the so, like, you're not going to be like, oh, I need to play this on three because it's my only three-mana spell, right? Like, that's never going to happen. You have morphs. So you can always do that um, on turn three instead of this. And also, the the fact that the ability, like, the second half of this ability is whenever something dies, make a flyer. Like, that's really good. Like, that's really good. <laughs> um, like, if this was, so, I mean, Lingering Souls, this is not, right? It's not Lingering Souls. You're not paying three mana and just getting two one-one flyers immediately, right? But... Over the course of a game, if you get two flyers out of this, yeah, I mean that's decent. Like your opponent like can't trade with your stuff anymore, one for one. 
uh, is basically what this card is saying, and that's really powerful. However, again, and I'm keeping it out of tier one just because I'm like, it does need a little bit of help, but I think I think that unlike a lot of these type of cards, I think the help is going to be coming. I think there is going to be the cavalry coming over the hill here. Um, and I think, again, the, I've basically just graded the three color cards in this set as if you're going to have the mana to cast them, because I assume that you will. There's three, like, there's two cycles of, I guess there's three cycles of lands. There's a common, uncommon, and rare cycle of lands that all tap for, that all help to fix you. So I assume that if you're casting these cards, you certainly have the ability to do so. Um, and this one, again, you don't really want to cast this on three, so it doesn't really matter so much that it's, you know, one of each color, because you have plenty of time. You want to really want to cast this on, like, turn six. Abzan Charm. Again, one of one of each of the Abzan mana. For an instant, you can choose one. Uh, exile target creature with power three or greater. You draw two cards and lose two life. Or you distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures. It's an instant as well, I think I mentioned that. Um, all the charms are really good, I assume. Um, they, this one looks... Basically, I have all the charms either in tier two or tier one, just for flexibility reasons. It's possible this one... I originally had this one in tier one, and then I was like, ah... The removal spell having to hit something power three or greater is kind of tough. Like, that's not super great. Like, all of these modes, in contrast to some of the other charms, like, are, like, slightly not as much as I want. Some of the charms, they're just like, what if we gave you three things that were just on rate? You know what I mean? Like, there's some that are like that. This one is not like that. It's three things that are kind of slightly bad. And it is three color, like, different colors. Unlike the last card, where that doesn't really matter so much, this one, being three different colors, does matter quite a bit because you need to be able, like, you want to be able to hold this up when you, you know, need it and not, like, you know, you don't want to be, like, messing around with your mana um, to make this work, but it's good. It's a good card. All the charms are good. I think. There might be one that's bad. Let me, we'll see in a moment. Abzan Guide. Three white, black, green for a 4-4 four, four with lifelink, and it has more for uh, two and white, black, green. Um, yeah, it's a large lifelinker. Uh, lifelink's good. A 4-4 four, four is big in these times. Uh, you morph this on three, on turn five, you flip it over, it's a 4-4 four, four lifelink. You, it's a huge life swing on your opponent when you attack with it, and yeah, that's that's really good. It's really good. Um, I have been informed that you do not have to worry about getting blown out when you flip your morph things so much. You just, apparently, um, how it works is you can't, your opponent can't respond to you flipping your morph by, like, removing your thing. So they have to wait until it becomes a 4-4 four four to remove it. Obviously, it's still kind of a blowout if they have instant speed interaction and you spend 5 mana flipping, you're turning your 3-drop into a 5-drop, and then they just kill it. But uh, they can't, you know, deal 2 damage to it in response. So that's going to get people. If if that's the case, and I believe that, I, I trust, you know, the people that have told me that, if that's the case, people I'm gonna, like people are going to get blown out by that on Arena. It's just going to happen early on in the format. People are going to be like, oh, I can respond by doing this. You can't actually do that, I don't think. Um, that is what I've been told. <laughs> it's, it's a weird ability like that, where it's like, you know, you think that with activated abilities you can respond, but I don't think it's actually an activated ability. It's, it's strange. And also part of it is, like, again, with the Arena stuff, it's like, it's going to be, like, programming face down, like, face down, flipping a face up card. It's, 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 a, it's a weird, it's just, it's just a weird ability. It's just very weird. But uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be prone to uh, prone to misunderstanding, as I think you know I misunderstand it currently, and uh, you know I will understand it once I play with it <laughs> you know, on the on the arena where the rules are theoretically done properly. All right, Anafenza, the foremost uh, white black green for a four four. When it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on another tapped target tapped creature you control. Um, so it doesn't have to be attacking, it just has to be tapped. If a creature card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So, I mean, a 3-mana 4-4 in these times is just absolutely enormous. It's going to be the biggest thing on the battlefield for, like, two or three turns when you cast it. Um, so it's always going to have an attack. Like, if this thing doesn't have an attack that's at least okay on turn four, it, you it's a bad beat, right? Like, that's, that's unfortunate. Um... And the fact that it pumps another creature when it attacks is just really good. Uh, your opponent basically has to kill this immediately, or it starts to just snowball really fast. Um, their stuff gets exiled, which, which makes their delve cards worse. So yeah, I mean, just just everything that is likable about this card. Again, you gotta have your colored mana. But even if you again, if you play this on four, it's not that bad, right? You play this on turn four, not so bad. Um, 
play it on turn five, not so bad, right? Like, even that, it's not, like, the end of the world. So, uh, I like inoffensive. Ankle Shanker. Two red, white, and a black for a 2-2 two, two with haste. When it attacks, creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. So this card is very difficult to evaluate for me personally. I'm going to keep it 100% honest. Um, this card's tough. Because when you see, like, oh man, first strike death touch, it's so good. It's so good. Like, my opponent can't block. Unfortunately, they can block is the distinction that I would make, right? So you're paying five mana. You're dealing your opponent two damage. Okay, great. We need to have... Like, for this to be good, there need you need to have, like, four additional power and toughness in play already. Right? Like, you need to have four power in play that can get through on your opponent. And then I'm like, okay, you know, I made... I you enabled a good attack. But the thing is, they can still... if if Like, you have to be winning the race. And a five-mana 2-2 two -two isn't helping you win the race, damage-wise. It's helping you win the race in terms of, like, you get to be the first one who gets to race. But if your opponent just has bigger creatures... Like, if your opponent makes plays a five-drop... And then you you can't just like attack all again, and then you just have a two two for five, and it has to attack too. You can't attack with your other stuff without this, and it like dies to all the deal twos in the set, of which there are, but there's you know more than more than zero. Like there's certainly two mana like things that deal two damage to things. Um. So yeah, I, I'm not I'm not super thrilled even though again like it looks it, like, it's it's so appealing right there's so many things about it that are appealing and i still don't think i just don't think it's very good at the end of the day happy to be proven wrong here armament core two white black green for a four four it enters when it enters the battlefield distribute two plus one plus one that counters among one or two target creatures you control so at its at its worst, this is like a five minute six six. A five minute six six is kind of big, right? Like it's it, it's more than you would expect to get, and it basically like you can go all right, play a four drop, play this on five, put two counters on my four drop, attack for like five, right? Like let's say you play let's say you play a hill giant. That's the thing that happens in this format. You play this on five, your hill giant gets plus two plus two. It attacks for five. That's that's huge. Like that's big. Like that is like a lot. That's a lot of stuff to be doing. You still have a four four left over. Um, you can even like distribute better than that. Like that's like your. I feel like that's. I mean the word the absolute worst case scenario is you play like a morph on turn four and then you play this on turn five and make a your morph into a four four. That's that's not so bad, right? Like that's not. Like, that's basically. I mean the, again the absolute worst case scenario is you make a five minute six six, which isn't that bad. I mean it's. It's bad in the sense that it's weak to just like single target interaction, but like just the the fact that there's so much versatility. I like they could I feel like this would be a good card today, right? So we just they just had um something similar to this in Wilds of Eldrain. The five the three white green for a four four that made that gave your um put a put a roll token on something and made your enchanted creatures bigger. This is essentially that, but seven or eight like but like nine years ago right so like um yeah i just think it's i think it's really solid now that i like, that card in you know green white was fine it, was, it wasn't great or anything but i think this card's gonna be obviously better than that card avalanche tusker two green blue red for a six four when it attacks target creature defending player controls blocks it this combat if able so originally when I saw this card, I was like, ah, is it really that good? And then I was like, okay, wait a minute. You know, four four toughness for five mana in these in these these days isn't so bad. Um, and essentially you can, like if your opponent has a 4-4 four, four, and like they have also like a 2-2, two, two, this just like forces them to block with the 2-2. Two, two, and then also they, they're like, okay, well, I guess I might as well block with the 4-4. Four, four. It just it just enables you to do so many like cute things that I think I'm just I'm in I think I'm just in on this card um, six power again it's big it's it's got a lot of stats doesn't have a lot as many stats as the last card I think it's worse than the last card although I put it in the same tier um, because it doesn't have any immediate board impact however the stuff that it does when it attacks is I think is just gonna do a lot right and uh, I'm I'm very for it. Bear's Companion. 
2 in the teamer colors again for a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, put a 4-4 four -four creature token onto the battlefield. Yep, really solid. Really good. You get two bodies for, you know, five mana. Six, six total power and toughness. That seems to be the template. And, yeah, it's really good. Um, just a solid card. <laughs> Nothing really else to say about it. Butcher of the Horde. One red, white, black for a 5-4 flyer. Uh, sacrifice another creature, and it gains one of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Haste. Until the end of turn. Uh, yeah, this card's really good. Like, 4 mana, 5, 4 flyer in these times. Again, that's just huge. That's just absolutely enormous. And sometimes you give it lifelink. Like, sometimes it just has lifelink, and then you get to, like, or haste. Like, you can give, you can give this thing haste, which is crazy. Like, honestly, is it even that, like, I mean, you're going a little bit all in, but do you play a morph on 3, sacrifice the morph to give this thing haste? It's not the worst. It's not the worst. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, especially if you're making, like, tokens or something, and just this card just seems really good to me. Chief of the Edge. White, black for a 3-2. Other warrior creatures you control get plus 1 and plus 0. Oh. Um, there are warriors in white and black. There's not, like, a ton. Of, it's not, like, every single common creature is a white, is a warrior. And also the commons just aren't that good. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, I put this in the next card, which is Chief of the Scale. Uh, white, black for a 2-3. Other warrior creatures you control get plus 0, oh, plus 1 in the same tier. Um, Chief of the Scales stat line I think is better. I think a 2-3 is better than a 3-2 in this set because of Morph. But I think that the text on Chief of the Edge is better because giving your other warriors plus 1 plus 0 is better than giving them plus 0 plus 1. So I just kind of evened it out and said they were both okay and nothing special. But if you didn't, I think, I mean, if you're playing black and white in your deck, I think you'd always play these just because they're solid cards that are two drops. And again, there just aren't that many good two drops. Crackling Doom. Red, white, black for an instant. It deals two damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. Um, yeah, I mean, I like this. We've seen this effect before. The, like, sacrifice a creature with the greatest power or, like, best, biggest mana value among creatures you control. And that effect tends to be better than it looks. You know, sac the, the Edict effects, they've been doing more, right? Like, Tithing Blade from Ixalan has been a big success. Like, that card's really good, and I like that card a lot. It's a good design. But, you know, Edicts before that have just been, had just been kind of bad. But they've, they've kind of, like, I mean, and this was again back in the days when they didn't really, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like this. You know, two damage is not nothing. Like, two damage is, is decent. I think that, you know, make their, they lose their biggest thing, you deal them two damage. Seems decent. Seems good to me. Death Frenzy. Three black, green for a sorcery. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, you gain one life. Wow. I, I mean, <laughs> they, they, they have printed this card at three, but essentially this card at three mana since, and it has not been good. So at five mana, it is not going to be good. <laughs> wow. This, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what happened with this one. Deflecting Palm. What, red, white for an instant. Next time a source of your choice would deal damage. This To you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals damage to that to that source's controller. Um, this card is not for limited. It's just not very good to limited. But it is a card that is famous for its templating and how it interacts with... Um, uh, various effects, like Hexproof and stuff. Like, it's, it's very... You know what I mean? It's a, uh, it's, uh, you know, a card that has a history, I'll say that. Dune Blast. Four white, black, green for a sorcery. Choose up to one creature, destroy the rest. Keep your best creature and destroy all your opponent's stuff. That's really strong. This is like, you know, the original Farewell. This is like the original Farewell. Farewell was super busted. I expect this card to be basically as good. Um, because, again, you know, one extra mana, but the format's slower, and, yeah, I mean, this, this just seems really strong to me. Efreet, Weapon Master. Three, blue, red, white for a 4 3 first strike. When it enters the battlefield or is turned face up, another target creature you control gets plus 3, plus 0 until end of turn, and you can morph it for two blue, red, 
plate. Um, yeah, I mean, solid card. It's good. I think it's, uh, I think it's so decent, right? Like, you know, five mana, four, three, first strike. I mean, that's, this is one of those morphs that you could flip up and really ambush your opponent. Um, you could really get them with this one, right? It, it's, you know, first strike is, is no, uh, no mean feat, right? Like, five mana is going to be, like, your opponent passes with five mana up. You basically can't attack. Like, they have a morph creature five mana up. But basically what I'm recognizing is you can't attack into your opponent's morph creatures when they have mana up. Because, um, this, and this just works on both ends, right? You could be like, oh, I'm trading up with my thing. Um. It is another target creature, you can't give itself plus three plus oh. I don't know, this just seems like pretty flexible and I'm, I'm pretty interested in it. This is one of those cards I could see just moving down immediately, because I'm just like, again, like, you can only play so many five drop mana spells in your deck, but... I don't hate it. Flying Crane Technique. Three, uh, Jeskai Colors for an instant. Um, untap all creatures you control, they gain flying and double strike until end of turn. Um, yes, this kills your opponent whenever you cast... Like, if you cast this a card, you have won the game. Congratulations! Like if you cast it, you either win the game immediately or lose the game immediately. You either, you know, it's basically, it's a finisher. You need to have three creatures in play that are big enough to kill your opponent, and the opponent has to have no flyers. It's just two. It's the, the type of cards. They have printed many of them, and they're just they're just too situational. High Spire Mantis. Uh, two red, white for a three three flying trample. Noted good abilities: flying and trample. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, four mana three three flyer wasn't so bad, and uh, I mean these days four mana three this this card today would be maybe even tier five. I don't know, but I, I'm giving it some benefit of the doubt that it's just fine. You know, nothing wrong with it. Ice feather Aven, green white for a two two flying, and it has morph for one green blue. When it is turned face up, you may return another target creature to its owner's hand. So I put this in tier one. Um, it's really a flexibility grade, right? You can play this on two, not a lot of good two drops. It is completely dominant on turn two, right? You put a two mana two, two flyer. That's like, prob it's, it's one of the top, like this Seeker of the Way are like the top two, two drops in the format, I, I would think. Like the, it's competing with, the, with that card, right? Um, in terms of its just raw power. And then uh, if you draw this on turn six, you can, you know, draw this on like later on in the game, you can play it for its morph cost and, you know, bounce something, and that's good. That's really good. I mean, is it expensive? Yeah, it's really expensive, but it just the, the fact that you can do something with it later on when you draw your two drop on turn, you know, seven of the game is just great. It's great to have that flexibility. And for that reason, I've put it all the way up here because I think it's a really good card. Now, blue green, I think, you know, is it is it a playable color pair? The often the answer is no. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Um, Ivory Tusk Fortress. Two white, black, green for a five seven. Untap each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Each other player's untap step. So this is just really big. I probably could put this in tier one just because of like size reasons. It's just huge. Like it's just a five mana five seven. It's just really big. Um. And there's, you're going to have a lot of creatures in Abzan with plus one plus one counters on them in some capacity, and just the fact that you give them basically vigilance is nice. It's solid. It's like the ability is not anything. I mean, it works with Outlast also, I guess. That's the that's the joke, right? You can Outlast a thing, then it untaps so it can block. That's good. That's good. That's a good thing to be able to do, but you can't you know, necessarily do it immediately. But it's a, it's a big dumb creature that, you know, is has a lot of stats. And that's, I put it in tier 2. Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, Jeskai, one of each of the Jeskai colored blue, red, white, one of her enchantment. When you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, untap those creatures. When you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. It's impossible to grade this card. I have no, I have absolutely no idea. Like, this is so hard. Um, so giving your entire board prowess is very good. It's a good thing to do. Now it's three mana for no bo other board impact than that. But, you know, you get card selection and you're doing the... <sighs> I have a lot of concerns about this being like way too janky. I think it's like a fun build around -y thing. And you're like Jeskai Prowess decks, you probably would play it. 
it is that does trigger prowess by itself, right? That's nice. But uh, I have I have concerns about this card not being uh, very good. But I don't know. I put it in tier three because I threw up my hands and said I don't know. <laughs> Just guy charm on the other hand. Blue red white for an instant. Choose one. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. It deals four damage to target opponent or creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain life link until end of turn. Um, yeah, I mean you don't see the put target creature on top of its library for three mana ever, and uh, there's like a reason for that, and it's that it's a really good ability. Um, dealing four damage to your opponent. When you want it, you, when you want it, it's literally the best thing you could possibly have. Um, and creatures you control get plus one plus one in lifelink until end of turn is, a, like, again, and all of these are situationally excellent. And there's just a mode that you're going to cast a lot, which is put the creature on top of its owner's library, and that's just a good mode. So, I like this card a lot. Karu Lich Lord, three green or green black blue for a 4-4 four, four. at the beginning of your upkeep you may play, pay 2 in a black if you do return a creature card at random at random from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains flying trample and haste exile that at the card at the beginning of your next end step if it will leave the battlefield exile it instead of putting it anywhere else this is this is more like the card this is more like the cards I'm used to evaluating 8,000 lines of text on the card and then it just being not that good I should probably put this in tier 5 honestly um, yes, it provides, like, late-game value, um, but man, it's so much mana. Like, it's so much mana. And, like, sometimes you just get, like, you get, like, you get, like, a 2-2 two -two back, and it's, like, ugh. The fact that it's random is even, it's just, uh, I don't know, this card's not very good, basically, is what I'm saying. Kintree Invocation. Uh, black green for a sorcery. Put an XX black and a green spirit warrior creature token onto the battlefield where X is a, the greatest toughness among creatures you control. So this is interesting, right? Um, how much... How big does this have to be before it's good? You probably want to make a 4-4 four, four because you can't cast this on 2. So you probably want to cast this on like turn 5 and you have a 4 toughness creature in play and you make a 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty good. So, you know, I mean, obviously it has the caveat of needs other creatures to work, and I don't like cards like that. Um, so I put it in tier 3 instead of being like, oh, it's super busted. But I do think it's playable. Um, and I think it's, I think it's you know, basically like almost copy your biggest creature is, is good. Like, if that's, that's a good card, and it is only 2 mana, right? It's only 2 mana and efficiency at any stage of the game is always a, uh, is a good thing to have. Mantis Rider. Blue, red, white for a 3-3 three, three with Flying Vigilance and Haste. Yes, yeah, really good. Like all these are good keyword abilities. Um, uh, modern Staple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Modern Humans is not a deck anymore. But hey, you know, at, at one at one time, you know, Mantis Rider to the King. It's a, uh, you know, good art. Top tier art. And uh, that's Mantis Rider. <laughs> Mordu Ascendancy. Red, white, black for a enchantment. When a non-token creature you control attacks, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Sacrifice Mordu Ascendancy creatures you control get plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. Oh, man. Um, I, I, so... I... I this is hard, right? So this is like, oh, it's an Adeline type effect. And Adeline type effects tend to be really good. And so, uh, but I put it in tier. So I originally had this higher, and then I put it into tier four, because I'm like, wait, it doesn't impact the board by itself like the other Adeline effects do. We just saw the one from uh, LCI, and LCI one is good. It was good. I think it's a tier. Ended up being sort of a tier two card more than a tier one card. Um, and like, because it, the thing having to attack presents a lot of problems because a lot of the reason that like Adeline and the and whatever the other card's name is are good is they grow when you attack so you get some value like like you're getting value on both ends of the uh the creature attacking this is only getting value on one end and then like the plus o plus three is nice but it doesn't save you from like removal or uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not in love with this. But maybe it'll surprise me. Mardu Charm. 
Red, white, black for an instant. Choose one, it deals four damage to a creature. You can put two one one white creature tokens onto the battlefield. They gain first strike until end of turn. Or target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. And that player discards that card. Um, all these modes are good. I like that you can instant speed, that you can upkeep, uh, you can upkeep to rest them. So that's fun. But, uh, you're never going to do that. So, <laughs> You know, I mean, you could, I guess. You're never good. It's not a good idea, but you definitely could do it. Um, and yeah, they're dealing four damage target creature, really good. You know, sometimes you can get better with you get the two one ones and they, you know, have hit. first strike. That's great. So I don't know, I like this card. Marty Rough Rider. Two red, white, and a black for a five four. When it attacks, target creature can't block this turn. So yeah, I mean, this card's like basically unblockable. Uh, makes your other stuff hard to block too. Just like just big like just a large creature um really annoying like, just really annoying again doesn't impact the battlefield when it you know comes down but that's not as much of a requirement you know in this format as it is these days and uh, i like this card yeah seems solid to me master the way three blue red for a sorcery draw a card it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of cards in your hand so they printed uh fires of victory i think it's called in dmu which was essentially this, but you had the buyout option of you could just deal damage equal to the number of cards in your hand to something for two and a red, or for one and a red, sorry. And that card was, you know, you you basically never cast it for that mode. That was also an instant. So there's a lot of things that are, like, like that were better. However, this card, I think, is still really good. Like, I still think this is really good, even without the, like, flexibility to do the other stuff. Because, like, you basically never wanted to do it anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just it's just nice. It's just, this, this is better than it looks, I think. Basically, it looks kind of like, ah, oh, it's five mana removal, and uh, how good could it really be? It's a two for one, right? You're drawing a card, deal with their thing. You can sometimes hit them in the face. That's great, too. Mind Swipe. X blue red for an instant counter target spell, and this controller play, it pays X. It deals X damage to that spell's controller. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, like, you could, is this really, like, I, I, I could put this higher, I, the reason I put it in tier 5 is, Syncopate is, like, in a lot of, for, like, in, uh, Syncopate in Crimson Vow, which was the last time it was printed, was, like, a tier 3 card, maybe closer to tier 4, um, but you, you need, like, you need to hold up a lot of mana, right? And or or the damage doesn't like you need to hold up a lot of mana, or the damage doesn't like end up mattering that much. And that's why I don't think this is that. Good. I could probably put it in tier four. It's probably fine. It's probably better than tier five. It's probably like a like it's probably not gonna like completely be terrible. But I I just don't think this is what you want to be doing. Like especially in like blue and red, I think you want to be doing like aggro prowess stuff. Um, I don't think you can hold up three mana. Like, having to have three mana to make your opponent pay one extra mana is a lot. Like, that's a You're basically... It's a lot. That's a lot of mana. Um, and, uh, like, you better... And, like, if they ever have something... Like, if they have a morph creature in play, and you want to hold this up, like, it doesn't do anything. They just flip their morph guy and attack you. And you're like, oh, well, I guess this thing... Like, uh, it seems really bad to me. Now, again, on turn three specifically, again, you're going to be seeing a lot of morph on turn three, so maybe this is fine, because on turn three, you only need one to counter the morph spell, so maybe, maybe, maybe on the play, turn three on the play, this card's okay. Turn three, what about on the draw? What about on the draw? It's never good. <laughs> it's not... Yeah, I, I mean... It, it, de like, adding one onto Syncopate is not worth one extra mana, right? Like, adding deal one onto Syncopate is not worth one extra mana, and that's kind of what this is, so... I'm, I'm putting it in tier 5. Narset, Enlightened Mentor, Master, sorry. 3, blue, red, white for a 3 2 first strike hexproof. Uh, when it attacks, exile the top 4 cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may pay, play, or cast non creature, non land card, non creature cards, sorry. <laughs> Exiled with Narset this term without paying their mana cost. So essentially, like, you, I mean, you can't cast lands, but if you have. If you hit a non creature spell with this. It's really good. I probably should put this in tier... Eh, it's hex I mean, honestly, like, First Strike Hexproof is pretty good just by itself, because it blocks, right? It blocks, like, everything. Opponent's like, man, I really can't attack into that thing. 
and then it attacks you. It's a little small, so there's that concern. It is so expensive. Maybe I should move this down to tier three. Uh, yeah, I probably would do that if I could do this again. If it it should hit most of the time. Like, and if you hit two spells, you're thrilled. And if you hit one spell, it's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think Narset's okay. Ponyback Brigade. Three, red, white, black for a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, it returns face up. Put three, one, one, red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. That's a lot of tokens. So for five, so if you flip this for, and it has more for two red, white, black. Um, so you flip this up, you get four, four guys. You get four dudes, um, and that's that is valuable, especially in like certain decks where you want to go wide. Uh, there's some go wide payoffs. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of things for five mana. Essentially, five, six, six mana, really, but like you know, five mana or eight mana. <laughs> this is five mana, eight, and six mana. Rakshasha Death Dealer, uh, two or black green for a two two. It, you can play black green and it gets plus two plus two until end of turn, or you can pay black green and regenerate it. That seems fine. Seems okay. You're basically, I don't think, ever really gonna have enough colored mana to activate this more than twice maximum. But and even that is the stretch is probably gonna only be more than like once. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's solid. Seems solid to me. Like you make a big thing, you can regenerate it. You know, that's okay. I don't actually know if they have to. Is, is this the first time they're putting cards that have regenerate on them? No, they have uh, Skitherix, I think, regenerates. So it's not their first regenerate cards on Arena, but. Um, yeah. So, it seems okay. Solid. Nothing special. Rakshasha Vizier. Um, two. Uh, black, green, blue for a 4-4. Four, four. When one or more cards are put into exile from your graveyard, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. There's just not that many ways to do this. Uh, I'm sure there are creative things I haven't thought of, but it just seems really hard to enable. Um. And you're basically making a 5-mana 4-4, four, four, and a 5-mana 4-4 four, four is not great. So, like, yes, it makes your opponent not want to exit. I guess, so, that's not true. There's Delve. So this works with Delve, right? It's a 5-mana 4-4, four, four, and then you cast the Delve spell, and then this becomes enormous. Okay, you know what? I'll put it in Tier 3, then. Yeah, I mean, I, with Delve, I think you can move it up. The base stats being this bad is still a bit of a problem. Like, it's probably not it's even that bad. Like, hmm, it it gets really big, but it is just one creature that gets really big. Um, but yeah, I mean, all you need is one. All you need is one Delves card, and then this becomes enormous, because it is that many counters. So that's it becomes huge. But your opponent, like at the end of the day, like big creature that just becomes really big, you they can just chump it, you know, right? So that that does have some. Concerned, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it higher than tier three for now, but I, I will move it up a little bit just because if I forgot about delve, and that's how delve works. Ride down. Red white for an instant destroy target blocking creature creatures that were blocked by that creature. This combat gain trample. Um, yeah, I mean I think this should probably be tier three. It's fine. It's a fine card. It's you know yeah you know I'll, I'll do that too. Hold on. A lot of editing stuff today. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, we saw this in SIR and it was fine. Red, red white was just a non functional color pair um, in that draft format. Um, it was, I mean, it depended on the week, I guess. But it was okay. Like, you could play it and it was fine. I think it's probably better in this format. There's bigger stuff. Um, yeah, it seems okay. Sage of the Inward Eye. Two blue, red, white for a three, four flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. So this basically is a flying lifelink uh, on your turn, essentially. Like, because you're gonna cast, like, again, in the Jeskai colors, you're gonna be casting non-creature spells. That's like what you're doing. So it seems decent, but again, the base stats like five mana, three, four flyer, three colors of mana to cast the five mana, three, four flyer is a little tough. Um, but I think it's fine, right? Like, it's a totally fine card, but nothing super amazing. 
Sagu Mahler. Uh, four green blue for a 6-6 six, six trample hexproof. It has morph for three green blue. So this is just big and has hexproof, and that is and trample. Like, it seems like it's really, really annoying to deal with. Um, I didn't put it in tier one only because it is just, I mean, it, you know, you can't, I mean, you can block it, theoretically. <laughs> theoretically, it's blockable. But, uh, and it is, you know, five mana, six mana, so I was like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's just stats, but yeah, maybe I could put this in tier one. It does seem extremely, it seems like the most annoying card to play against, for sure. Um, feels kind of like uh, Thrun, I guess. I think it's probably worse than Thrun, because Thrun, um, essentially had Hexproof, but also Indestructible. And I think didn't have trample. I should know this. I own the card, um, but yeah, I don't know if it had trample or not. But yeah, the the fact that this can be blocked, you know, I, I don't know. It's good. It's really good. I think. Savage Knuckle Blade, green, blue, red for a four four, it, and you can pay two and a green. It gets plus two plus two until end of turn. You can activate this ability only once each turn. Uh, you can pay two and a blue to return it to its owner's hand, and you can pay single red to give it haste until end of turn. Um, yeah, I mean, this just seems solid to me. I should not actually, I should not have put this in tier one. I don't know. I just, I got, it's a three mana four, four. So that's why I put it in tier one and like the ability to, um, give it plus two, plus two until end of turn is like really strong, but tier one might be a bit high. Yeah. I think tier one's probably a bit high. I don't think this just like, like it doesn't completely take over the game. It mostly is just a three mana four, four. Yeah, it's mostly, it's mostly like a 3-mana 4-4 four, four at the end of the day. Like, you can give it haste for 4 mana, and that's nice. But you have to have, like, all 4 colored mana. It's really tough to do. Um, but, uh, I mean, the ability to give it plus 2, plus 2 is nice. So, I don't know. I like it. It's solid, but I don't think it's busted or anything. Secret plans. Green, blue for an enchantment. Create down creatures you control get plus 0, plus 1. Whenever a permanent you control is turn face up, draw a card. So this actually seems like a solid build around, right? Like, you're, I mean, you don't even have to do that much building, right? It's just, you just play morph creatures, and then it they're bigger, and this actually plays nicely into them because it's a two-mana spell, so you can go two into, like, three-mana morph thing and to, like, flip it up on four, and you draw a card. Um, yeah, I mean, the, there's obviously issues with, like, incentivizing yourself to play more three-mana two-twos in your deck, right? That's, that's always a little bit of a concern, but you're going to draw some cards over the course of a game. It's not a completely terrible top deck, right? You, you probably do still have stuff that's, like, morphed face down. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's okay. I think it's an okay card. I don't uh, I don't hate it so much. I like it. But I didn't put it in tier 3 because you need, it needs help. But I, I, you know what? I think it's decent. It's a DC Blood Tyrant. Uh, one... Black, green, blue for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Um, so there are other ways to mill yourself in the set. Not a ton of them, but there are some. Like there's, It's not completely inconsequential um, that that comes up. And if you're going to hit one creature pretty much like every time with this, like most of the time, I, should, I probably should put this. I get. And then, I mean, obviously, like it has enter the battlefield or attacks triggers. It's like a mini grave titan kind of, um, and it just makes it just does so. It makes so many things, right? Like if you hit two creatures on this, it's great. You probably you do probably want to be running fifteen, at least fifteen creatures in your deck. Probably more like seventeen, eighteen creatures, closer to that number, for this to be like really good. But, um, you know, this is gonna, you know, sometimes get you. Uh, two things, and sometimes it's going to get you one, and that's that's fine, right? You just have to sort of, you do have to, there's some considerations, but I think you, it's great. Siege Rhino. One uh, uh, white, gray, green, black for a 4 5 trample. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses three life, and you gain three life. Yep. It's real good. Siege Rhino's good. Everybody knows it. It's a house, it's a, it's a truck, right? It's just a very strong card. It does all the things you want. Snowhorn Rider, three green, blue, red for a five-five trample with morph for two green, blue, red. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, this seems okay, right? Like, essentially turn it up face up for five mana, and then you get a five five. That's fine. And then, you know, otherwise you're just paying for six mana for five five. That's like kind of fine. That's trample. Yeah. Seems seems decent. Honestly, it makes me want to move the other thing up to tier one, but it seems seems okay. Soren Solemn Visit vi Visitor. Two black white for a planeswalker. Uh, it does four loyalty. It has a plus one until your next turn creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain lifelink. Uh, you can put minus two to make a two two black vampire creature token with fly. Oh, it has flying. Okay, I'll put this in tier one. <laughs> so many mistakes today. Um, and it has a minus six. You get an emblem with at the beginning of each player's each opponent's upkeep. That player sacrifices a creature. It's not the thing that's really going to be happening. I actually think I'm going to leave it in tier two. The, I mean, I probably should just like put this in tier 1, because it doesn't make a flyer. It's a 4 mana 2-2 two, two flyer that your opponent has to... Okay, fine. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, tier, sure, fine. Tier, I'm not going to actually update it. It's, it's in tier 1. It's a Planeswalker. It's really busted. Um, it, uh... I didn't realize the thing had flying. <laughs> so many words you got to read. Uh, so let's ISN and see. Black, green, blue for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top in any order. Um, yeah, this is just, like, not... Like, you just need to get a lot of value out of your graveyard. Like, yes, at the beginning of your upkeep, mill two is, is good, but you're paying a whole card to do that. And it takes three colors of mana. It's a lot. It's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot going on here that I don't like very much. So Thy Charm. Uh, black, green, blue. For an instant, choose one. Destroy target monocolored creature. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Draw two cards and then discard a card. Uh, monocolored creatures are not going to be necessarily the creatures you care about in this format. I think you're going to care a lot more about multicolored creatures. But the fact that modality still keeps it uh, in tier two instead of, you know, some of the charms were in tier 1, this one I don't think is quite that good, but all the modes are solid. Sultai Soothsayer. 2 black, green, blue for 2-5. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. It's solid, right? It's a solid card, right? You know, 5 mana, 2-5. You you know, this is, this is Organ Hoarder, almost. It's almost Organ Hoarder. It's close, right? It's kind of close to Organ Hoarder. One extra mana, there's two extra colors of, of mana. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> seems 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 okay. Just okay. Sorok Dragon Claw. Two uh, green, blue, red for a 6-6 six, six flash. It can't be countered. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Um, and other creatures you control have trample. So, yeah, I mean, this thing just seems like an absolute house. You flash this in on five, you eat their, even their morph stuff just gets eaten by this. Um, cause they, like, basically there's very few things they can transform into that will kill this thing. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just absolute, it's just huge, like, just absolutely enormous. Um, so, yeah, I mean, making your stuff uncounterable is fine, it's probably not gonna be super relevant, but decent. And, uh, making your stuff have tramples good. Teamer Ascendancy. Uh, green, blue, red for an enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. I just don't think that, again, like, just three mana don't do anything. Give your stuff haste. We've seen this. It's not good, usually, this type of enchantment. It's three colors of mana. You have to have power four or greater things. Um, morphing does not count as them entering the battlefield, I believe, as well. So that's a big negative is to this as well. Like your your stuff having to enter is is a little bit of a concern there. So yeah. Teamer charm, green, blue, red for an instant. Uh, choose one. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Counter target spell unless it's controller pays three. Our creatures with power three or less can't block this turn. Yeah, all these modes have use, and they're all good, and they all do a thing, and they are all strong, except for the last one, which is, you know, again, if you win the game, sometimes you win the game, right? But uh, you're basically going to be choosing the first or second mode every time, and that's fine, because they're both good. Trap Essence. Uh, green, blue, red for an instant. Counter target creature spell, put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature. So, I originally had this a little higher, 
but we've seen cards like this before where you can only counter a certain type of spell and you have to have a creature in play for it to be good for that you countered it and it's three colors and I'm just not that excited about this card um, it's just I it's so much there's so many moving pieces that that are that make it hard for me to like this card and that's why I have it in tier four utter end. Uh, two black, blue, white for an instant. Uh, exile target, non-land permanent. Seems solid to me. Like probably like this is the removal spell you're afraid of when you're afraid of your opponent having a removal spell. It just exiles anything, and you know that's nice. Villainous wealth. X and black, green, blue for a sorcery. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost X or less, or among them without paying their mana costs. Uh, so you can cast, I, I assume you can just cast them whenever, but you need a bunch of mana. You probably need to pay five, right? Five is kind of the number that you'd want to be, pay. four maybe, but five really would be the number that I'd be interested in. Um, you draw five cards, probably five, and you can cast them, and that seems okay. It just seems really slow. Like, this is a card draw spell. And it's not even it's not an, even an unconditional card draw spell. It's a conditional card draw spell that exiles from your opponent's library, which kind of sucks. Um, and it, like uh, there's a reason I haven't put it in tier five is that I think you know it does you know provide card advantage, but uh, I'm not super interested. Warden of the Eye, two blue green red blue <laughs> blue red white for a three three. When it enters the battlefield, return target non creature non land card. From your graveyard to your hand. Um, yeah, I mean, nice to get back. You get back your best spell. Five mana, three, three. It's not so great, but, you know, they printed a four mana, like, two, one that did this in Midnight Hunt, and that card was bad, but, you know, there's prowess themes in Jeskai. Card advantage is better back back now. Um, I, I put this in tier two. Maybe it's only tier three, but, you know, Sometimes they, like, destroy your, like, busted enchantment that doesn't really exist in this format, but if they did, if it, somehow there was an enchantment that was good. Um, I'm just assuming that this card, like, gets back your best thing, and then you get a 3-3 three, three for 5. And that's pretty good. Winter Flame. Uh, one blue-red for an instant. You can choose one or both tap target creature or deal two damage to target creature. Yeah, choose a lot of damage these days, and, like, the fact that you can do both of these things is really strong, right? You kill their 2-2... Two, 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 and then you tap their thing, and then you hit them for eight. And that's what you do with this card. And, like, you could even use it on their turn and, like, prevent them from attacking. It just seems really strong and, like, flexible. And I put it in tier one as a result of that. And the final card, Zergo Helms Helm Smasher. Two red, white, black for a 7-2 with haste. It attacks each combat if able. And it's indestructible as long as it's your turn. Whenever a creature dealt damage by it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing just seems like a house. Like, it's the weird, it's very weird, but it's probably getting you a two for one, right? You attack with it on five, your opponent doesn't really want to take seven. Sometimes they take seven, that's good for you. If they, you know, block with anything, the thing dies, this thing lives, they have to use a removal spell on this. Yes, it can't block, but it's just, it's just really big and does a lot of damage, and I think for that reason, I'm going to put it in tier one and that's it that's the whole multicolored set review there's a lot of multicolored cards it's a multicolored set i'm excited to you know check this stuff out um and uh yeah looking forward to it in like uh you know a couple couple weeks when it comes out i don't even think it's a couple weeks i think it's just over a week although i'm going to be playing a lot of vintage cube so there's that too um if you enjoyed see you next time um and that's all for me